Now, everybody's probably seen stories that have come out recently about a tidal wave of public engagement with Congress at various levels of anger or frustration. And one of the big recommendations coming out of it is if you want to be heard, truly listened to by your elected official, you should do one of two things. Show up in person, call on the phone. I think that's banana land. It's absolutely nuts. Whether it's true or not, because it is probably true, it's the asking the wrong question and giving the wrong recommendation. Showing up in person, calling your congressman just to get through, that's the best technology, what, 1950 had to offer? We are in our digital age, as we've heard so much today, but we have a Congress that is struggling with technology and with the internet age. Everybody has a stake in a Congress that works as best as it can in the 21st century. But due to reasons of politics, and I loved how you said it, Miriam, problems of imagination, we have a Congress that, as Kathy McMorris Rogers likes to say, uh, bears far more resemblance to the 19th century or the 20th century than it does to the 21st. This is a massive, massive, massive problem for everybody. To put some numbers on it, what other institution would see a skyrocketing workload and would respond to that workload by cutting its own resources and ability to do the job? That, ladies and gentlemen, as we know here in Washington, the belly of the beast, where two plus two almost never equals four, is the problem with the United States Congress. Increasing workload, but cutting our resources to deal with it. Something has to give. And the thing that has to give actually already has given out, right? We've seen healthcare.gov blow up, all in one fell swoop, lead to, a, or lead to, thanks to imagination, an incredible response by the executive branch in the creation of highly talented teams of civic technologists, user experience designers, data scientists who came in and who fixed it for pennies on the dollars in months. Now, Congress has been in the middle of a slow motion healthcare.gov crisis for decades. So it makes the problem that much more insidious to solve. Now, it's not just the public, right? We're all familiar with the, uh, the public approval numbers of Congress being somewhere, you know, we are in the basement of the National Archives. It's the, the approval ratings are somewhere down below. <laughs> But when you, when you actually ask the folks, the hardworking men and women inside the institution, about their ability to meet the rising demand for civic engagement, just look at that. About 90% say they don't, just don't have the tools to deal with it. But if you crunch the numbers like we have, and you can check them out at opengovfoundation.org, Congress is spending $300 million. It's actually more now. Um, we've just finished the first draft of analysis of, of how the House spent its money in 2016. It's the House alone, so this $288 million is upper is House and Senate. Um, the House alone last year spent north of $200 million, right? There's money there. There's a clear problem there. The public is not going away anytime soon, and thank goodness they're not. And so we've put together this idea, this plan for a congressional digital service. Now, we're not the first people to come up with this idea of a digital service, uh, thanks to President Obama's leadership. We have the US Digital Service, we have 18F, we have the Presidential Innovation Fellows Program. What Congress needs is a highly talented, directed SEAL team, if you will, or tiger team, if you will, insert whatever fierce animal uh, you would like, team of technologists, data scientists, designers to come in and work with congressional offices to very first and foremost identify the problems of the institutions. Some of them are internal and operational, some of them are how workflows work, business process. Many don't even need a new tool to solve. But nobody knows what the real problems are. Nobody knows what an appropriate response time is. Right? With FOIA, we've got numbers uh, on how long it takes to get a response. Nobody's done that with, with const constituent correspondence. If I call, what's an appropriate response look like? If I tweet, what's an appropriate response look like? Nobody even knows. And this is no longer a question of do we need to build millions of new tools from scratch. The solutions, by and large, already exist. It's a question of having people outside of the partisan political process, inside the institution, working with those hardworking men and women, uh, both technologists, folks like in the clerk's office or in the CAO's office, and the public to figure out the best way to achieve the mission of the Congress of the United States of America. It's not complicated. And I know in this town we like to, ass to assign blame. 
Um, this is nobody's fault. But now that we know what the problem is and what the solution looks like, it's everybody's responsibility to, to step up and do something better for the United States Congress. And it's like we like to say, let's add some stripes to your stars. And if you'd like to find out more, uh, find us on the internet, uh, shoot me a note, come find me afterwards, and uh, let's get ourselves a 21st century Congress we all sorely need. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> um, Seamus, one, one quick question for you before we pass uh, on to Adam is what do you think the likelihood is that we're going to see this? Uh, I think it is, as much as one can say in this town, um, the likelihood that we see a congressional digital service happen yeah. uh, in this Congress is very, very high. Uh, now, one of the questions that we, I didn't touch on here is where would it sit? Um, so it needs to be outside of the political process, right? Outside of who controls what chamber. It needs to have the remit and the resources to work ledge branch wide. So now you're looking at ledge branch support type agencies. Uh, for example, like the Library of Congress might be a really good place. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that we've gotten to a place with the, the size and the scope of the problem and the snowplow work uh, that has been done at the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue, uh, that the chances that we see a congressional digital service at least stood up, if not working, uh, in this Congress are very, very good. That's great to hear. Yeah.